The movie is set in a dystopian America where a deadly pandemic has spread through some northern states. The weird thing about this pandemic is that anyone who speaks will die. A news report shows graphic images of some people that fell victim to the pandemic. In another video, a terrified woman is seen recording herself while inside a car. Her daughter's mouth has been taped shut so that she doesn't scream, and the woman is holding a sign which mentions, don't make noise. Too bad tweeting doesn't also get people killed. Due to all of this, the government has declared a state of emergency while suggesting everyone stay indoors and switch off their phones. Just a few days later, the pandemic has already decimated parts of the country. In an underground metro, there's blood and dead bodies everywhere. The surviving passengers have taken refuge inside train carriages, nervously hoping for the catastrophe to end. Suddenly, a baby starts crying and his mother fails to make him stop. Terrified of the noise, a group of passengers proceed to kick the baby out of the train, but the mother decides to leave with him. Sadly, her decision turns out to be fatal, as in just a matter of seconds, something catches up to them. Following this, the movie rewinds back to the time where it all started. A group of archaeologists are digging through uncharted caves in Pennsylvania, 1,000 feet beneath the Appalachian Trail. They come across a massive, never-before-seen dark chamber and begin to celebrate. However, suddenly, they hear strange noises coming from inside of it, and lo and behold, the researchers come under attack by unknown flying creatures who instantly kill them and fly out of the mine. The movie then cuts to a high school in Montclair, New Jersey. A deaf teenager named Allie Andrews is waiting for a bus when she realizes that a bunch of douchebags are mocking her for being deaf. She ignores them and decides to walk back home. Allie lost her hearing ability in a car accident three years ago. She also lost her paternal grandparents in the crash. She communicates with others through sign language, lip reading, and speaking. Also, douchebag detection. Meanwhile, a guy named Rob shows up and offers to walk her home. They both have a major crush on each other, but always fall short of admitting it. At work, Allie's father Hugh gets a call from his wife Kelly, who informs him that their daughter was again bullied at school. This upsets him, but there's not much he can do about it. Ever since Allie lost her hearing ability, Hugh and Kelly have become very protective of their daughter and often have fights about it. Allie lives with her parents, brother Jude, and terminally ill maternal grandmother Lynn. The Andrews family also have a pet dog, Otis. At night, Rob sends Allie a fascinating video of a colony of what looks to be bats flying somewhere. At 3 a.m., Kelly wakes Allie up and asks her to come downstairs. She notices that her entire family is in the living room, glued to the TV, looking worried. All windows are closed and the fireplace has been covered by plastic. The TV is reporting that several U.S. cities are under attack by an unknown species of pterosaur-like creature referred to as Vesps. They are unleashed onto humanity when some researchers blasted through the ancient rockfall that was sealed off for millions of years. The creatures can kill humans in a matter of seconds and use a noise to locate their prey. Because of this, the U.S. government has declared a state of emergency and asked people to stay indoors and be quiet. As everyone watches the news in horror, Allie suggests that they head to the countryside as it is both quieter and safer. Hugh agrees and everyone starts packing their belongings. One of Hugh's friends, Glenn, also joins them and together Together, they set out for the countryside. Later, Allie and her family stop at a gas station to refuel their cars. She uses the opportunity to take Otis out to pee, while Hugh tries to keep his son Jude entertained. Suddenly, he hears Allie screaming and quickly runs to her. A man has held her at gunpoint and is demanding keys to Hugh's car. Hugh is about to comply, but Glenn shows up to his rescue and shoots the robber in the foot. Terrified, the Andrews take the man's gun and drive away, leaving the robber to be killed by the creatures. However, before they can get far, the group comes across a massive traffic jam that's blocking all the interstate highways. Glenn proposes an alternative and they go off-road. While driving through the countryside, Glenn suddenly comes across a herd of fleeing deer. He quickly swerves his car in order to avoid a crash, but ends up tumbling down the embankment. The Andrews immediately go to check on him and find him alive. Sadly, he is trapped inside the car. The family tries everything to save Glenn, including using a nut wrench to open the door and calling 911, but nothing works. At last, Last, Glenn realizes that he is eventually going to bleed out, so he asks Hugh to hand him his gun and leave with his family. Distraught, Hugh doesn't want to leave his best friend alone, but for the sake of his family, he agrees. Unfortunately, just as the family is about to leave, Otis senses something and starts barking repeatedly. This attracts the Vesps, and they attack the vehicle with tremendous intensity. Just when all hope seems to be lost, Glenn, who is still trapped inside the car, starts firing his gun to lure the creatures towards him. He manages to to save the Andrews temporarily, but gets himself killed in the process. All this time, Otis keeps on barking, hence, left with no choice, Hugh makes 
the difficult decision and lets the dog out of their car to die. The Andrews then realize that they can't drive away in their car without attracting the Vesps, so they decide to abandon it. Hugh lights his car on fire to distract the Vesps and sets out on foot with his family to find a shelter. They walk for hours and Lynn struggles to keep up with her coughing, putting the family at risk. By evening, the family comes across an isolated house surrounded by a high fence and a locked gate. When they try getting in, the gate makes a noise and attracts the Vesps. Soon, the homeowner also comes out with a gun. Seemingly unaware of the current situation, she tries threatening the intruders, but the Vesps immediately swarm her and rip her apart. Damn, she didn't deserve that. After the incident, Hugh looks around the property for an alternate exit and comes across a storm drain tunnel that leads into the compound. He ventures into the property first to make sure it's safe. After getting the green light from Hugh, Allie and the others enter the tunnel, but inside, Jude comes across a rattlesnake, which makes him scream and attract the Vesps. The Vesps kill the snake, but they also bite Kelly's leg. With time running out, Hugh quickly operates a wood chipper to distract the creatures and shreds them to death. In the next scene, the family finally enters the house and cleans Kelly's wounds. Before going to bed, Allie contacts Rob and finds out that his parents have been killed by the creatures. Worried, she asks him to get out of the city, but before Rob can respond, the call disconnects. Meanwhile, amidst all the chaos and despair, a religious cult is on the rise that is seeking new recruits and killing non-believers. The next day, Lynn again examines Kelly's wounds and learns that it is infected. Realizing that the wound is going to continue to spread without antibiotics, Hugh heads out to find a medical store with Allie. After walking silently for an hour, they come across a deserted city and look for a pharmacy. Ultimately, they find one, but it is dark, deserted, and stinking of rotten flesh. As Hugh collects the medicine, Allie notices Vesp eggs growing inside human corpses lying around the store. She inadvertently makes some noise and alerts the creatures. Now, the duo is stuck inside the store with several Vesps. Fortunately, he thinks of a plan. He silently lights a mop on fire and activates the fire alarm. The noise from the fire alarm and the water sprinkler distract the creatures, and the father-daughter duo manages to escape unharmed. Outside, they are approached by a reverend who seems to have cut his tongue. It turns out he is the leader of the cult that's going around recruiting people and killing non-believers. The reverend asks them to join his flock, but Hugh refuses and walks away. They manage to save safely return home with antibiotics, and Kelly begins to recover. The next day, Allie approaches Hugh and informs him that she watched the news at night, which stated that the Vesps can't stand intense cold weather. Hence, people above the Arctic Circle are surviving. She also tells him about regions called the Grey. These are places where electricity has gone out, and people are being cut off from the world when the battery of their phone or computers are dying. It is almost as if the Dark Ages have arrived again. Later that day, the Reverend and his cult members show up at Hugh's hideout. He again asks Hugh to join their cult, but is again turned down. As Hugh proceeds to go back inside, the Reverend stops him and writes him a creepy note, which reads, The girl is fertile. Hugh looks them up and down and goes back inside. The Reverend and his cult members assume Hugh is going to fetch his fertile daughter for them, but he returns with a damn rifle instead. However, the lunatics are unfazed, as they know Hugh won't shoot them, which would create a loud noise and jeopardize his family. Despite this, Hugh takes the safety of the rifle off, and the cult members finally go away. Later that evening, Allie gets a message from Rob. He tells her that he is headed north of the country to the refuge. It is a place where all the people can be safe from the creatures. But before Allie gets to ask him more about it, she loses her phone signal. At midnight, Hugh and Kelly wake up to noises coming from outside. He grabs his rifle and checks the main door, while Kelly wakes Lynn and Jude up. Hugh doesn't see anyone at the door. However, when Jude checks, he notices a little girl his age standing outside. The girl looks afraid so Kelly decides to let her in. Worried, the Andrews family provides her with a warm blanket and asks her how she got here, but the little girl does not respond. Just then, Kelly notices some scars on the girl's jaw, and Hugh inspects her mouth. They discover, to their horror, that the girl doesn't have a tongue. She is a member of the Reverend's cult and most likely sent by him. The Andrews family have been set up. They check her waist and realize that she's been strapped with multiple mobile phones. Meanwhile, Allie wakes up in her room and notices a phone taped 
hooked to a cross on her window. The phone alarm suddenly starts to go off and attracts the creatures, freaking Allie out. The phones strapped to the little girl also start to go off, and the family scrambles to take them off. Hugh dumps the phones in the water, while Allie runs into the living room. As everything is happening, the creatures start breaking their windows. Hugh and Jude try to keep the vesps out, while Allie and others go into the basement to hide. Unfortunately, masked cult members had been waiting for Allie, and they grab her from the basement. Kelly attacks the men, but they kick her into the wall, knocking her down. The men carry Allie out, and the little girl also goes with them. Enraged, Lynn leaves the safety of the house and follows the men outside. She grabs two of the three men and signals Allie to flee. The girl obliges, and as soon as she reaches a bit far, Lynn, who is still holding the cult members, starts screaming at the top of her lungs. This eventually attracts the Vesps, and they rip the three humans to shreds. The rest of the family also comes outside, but all they can do is watch in horror. Just then, the Reverend shows up and abducts Allie. Before leaving, he even taunts Hugh to stay silent. However, taking advantage of the rain, Hugh, Kelly, and Jude quietly follow them and launch a surprise attack. An enraged Hugh strangles the cult leader with a rifle, but the Reverend stabs him with a knife in the waist. However, Hugh summons all his strength and again gets back up. He uses his late best friend, Glenn's classic headbutt, and knocks the cult leader down as Kelly takes the other cult members out. She then helps her husband by taking the knife out of his waist. The Reverend attempts to get up, but Hugh again gets on his case. This time, he hammers the cult leader to death with the rifle. After the encounter, the Andrews family returns home, while the tongueless girl walks away with her mother. Following this, the movie fast forwards by a few weeks, where the family is seen trekking across the country. They initially arrive at the safe haven that is the refuge. In the final scene, Allie and Rob are hunting Vesps in the forest. The movie ends as Allie wonders whether the Vesps will adapt to the cold, and if the humans will adapt to the life of silence, like she did when she